All right, we're gonna get started with our ribs. What we wanna do is place these on top of plastic wrap. Because what we're gonna do first is get them in the oven. And we're gonna let them cook for really about, about close to an hour, but the temp is, is low. We're gonna go to almost the lowest setting that you, that you have, roughly around 200 degrees. For the tenderest ribs, you wanna cook them low and slow. All right, simple seasonings, kosher salt. And because we're making a nice sauce, we don't wanna to go too heavy with the different seasonings. We got basil, which I love, almost one of my favorite spices in the dry time. A little bit more. And we can't forget our fresh ground pepper. Oh yeah. All right, we in the game. So what we wanna do is just wrap these. Let me scooch that up a little bit. We wanna wrap these as tight as possible because what'll happen as they're starting to cook, you know, all the juices will come out of the out of the ribs, but we want to trap it in to keep our keep our ribs nice and moist and tender. So we're squeezing these nice and tight. Get all the air out. Like so. Alright. Then we just give it a little flip. And then we're gonna do the same thing with our foil. Trapping all the juices, all the flavors. So that we got Chef Nate Brown style deep fried ribs. So we good there. Just throw them in the oven, in a baking dish, you know, about an hour and a half at 200 degrees. Then we come out with something great. What we're gonna do now is start on our uh, cream basil corn. Simple ingredients. We got the corn that we saw a little earlier, frozen corn. We gotta get an onion. We're gonna go with fresh basil, salt, pepper, a little bit of heavy cream, comes out great. So let's grab this onion real quick. Uh, let's see. I think for this recipe, I'm going to go with the yellow onions. Nice and sweet. Add to our sweet corn. All right. So, what we're going to do is try to get some small dices on our onions. This will add great flavor to your corn. I love to cook with onion. Don't like the teary eyes that you get from chopping up the onion, but you know, that's the sacrifice of making good food. So we're just gonna do some little slices in the onions. This is a quick little way to chop up the onion. And, and once you get used to this, you can actually have the onion nice and diced up before you even, you know, start crying get a couple more slices got to be careful not to cut the fingers and then you just go down like that got simple nice little chopped up onions got to be careful when you do that other side because there's not as much onion to grip but we don't want to waste any either. Got to try to keep it together. But this is the fun part of being in the kitchen. And, you know, look like we're going to have to hang around in the kitchen a little while longer because Mother Nature don't want to bring spring to us. But that's okay because we can keep hooking up these fresh recipes. Okay. We got chopped onion. Let's get our stove going. 
And what we want to do, get a little bit of vegetable oil, just a tad bit, to coat our pan. Got a nice flame. We're just going to go in with these onions. And then we can go in with our corn. It's going to be nice. Let that begin to go. Then, let's bring our fresh basil over. What I'm gonna do, as I clean up my little mess, is pick out the prettiest leaves that I see in my basil bush and this is a nice nice pick got nice fresh leaves smells great love the smell of basil we just pick off a few leaves so that we can chop these up also and add this in with our corn so we're getting a lot of flavors and we haven't even seasoned it yet with the spices so you can just imagine how this is going to be it's full of all kind of, all kind of flavor. Get a couple more. Make sure they're nice. And let's see. This one ought to do right here. So we'll sit that to the side. Can't forget to stir the corn. Which is looking nice. Okay, so what we can do, the easiest way to chop it up, place all the leaves together like this, get a couple more, give it one more whiff, that's nice, sit those to the side. What we want to do is just roll it, just like that. Shouldn't have a problem rolling it. And we just go chop it just like this. So it's easy to control everything. Want to keep those fingers tucked so you don't cut them. You're not making a mess. And chop it one more time across. Have a little fun. Speed it up. This is always good to let the kids do give them something to do in the kitchen gotta have the kids in all right so we got our basil stir that around looking good and you basically just want to let that saute for a second before we keep going in with different flavors all right, smelling good. All right, so must that you try this at home. I'm almost demanding it. Because this is something you're gonna wanna take into spring with you whenever we get that weather so you can go outside, get the grill going, you can come back in. This corn is real simple, real fast. Next we can grab our heavy cream that we found in the back and you don't need a lot of this just want just enough to make it you know a creamy corn all right okay let's add a little bit of our fresh ground pepper winning with the pepper you never go wrong with the fresh ground pepper. Let's get a couple pinches of the kosher salt. All right. Stir that around. And what I'll do, last but not least, is grab the sugar, just sprinkle 
roughly about three to four tablespoons of sugar. Continue to mix that around. It's becoming nice and creamy. Yeah, and I think that's about ready. So what we can do, turn our fire down and we're just gonna continue to let that simmer. So we wanna bring everything up at the same time so we can eat, okay? Next, we're gonna go ahead and get this sauce started. Real simple sauce. Gotta let that go for a minute and then we'll do that broccoli later. I think I've come up with a pretty good idea for the broccoli. Alrighty, so we got our pot. Get our fire going. And this is a simple sauce, but it's probably the best sauce you've ever had in your life. Sweet and sour sauce. Equal parts of vinegar, sugar, and ketchup. You let it go, hit it with the whisk a couple times, great taste. So we get our vinegar going first. Get a cup full of the vinegar. Let that go. Get our sugar and do the same. All right. And then the ketchup. After this, you will never have to get the sweet and sour sauce when you order Chinese again. I'm giving it to you right here. And then we go with our ketchup. Here, just so you believe me, I'll do the same. I don't want you thinking that I tried to trick you. Okay, equal parts of everything. Just like that. Now, we take our whisk out because once that starts to uh, simmer, just hit it with the whisk and you're done, literally. So what we're gonna do is take one more break. I'm gonna come back, put everything together. We're gonna see if we can find somebody to taste this. So you won't just take my word, you can take somebody else's word that, you know, this goes together nice. All right, tune in, chopping it up with Chef Nate Brown. Okay, welcome back. We are just about done. We're gonna get ready to take our ribs out. It's been enough time. Get ready to drop them in a deep fryer. Can't wait to taste these. Here we better probably make a little room for ourselves. Sit this over here. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Oh yeah, turned out just the way we want it. See our seasonings on there, worked out great for us. So now what we want to do, bring our deep fryer pan over and take them from right out of the pan and drop them into the basket. And let them go to work. Alrighty, we'll do a couple of different batches. Uh, look like we might be able to fit them all in here. Cause I don't know about you, but I'm hungry. Oh yeah, we got it. So all we want to do, drop it in the fryer. Mmm, nice. So we're just gonna let that go for a couple of seconds. And basically, what happens with the deep frying process is you get a hard skin on the outside. It's great. So whisk our sauce, and the sauce is done. It was that simple, but it's gonna be just that great. Our broccoli, I figured we'd keep it simple with the broccoli. We're just gonna blanch it for a second. Because like, like I was saying, with frozen foods, it's a lot of nutrients in there. And you don't want to cook it all out by overcooking your vegetables. So we just drop those in there. And 
And if you don't know what the blanching process is, it's simple. You're cooking it for no longer than a minute. And you're supposed to take it out, cool it on a bed of ice, but I'm gonna skip that process because you know I'm ready to let somebody try this. So we're gonna do that. Let's add a pinch of salt to help with our flavor. One more pinch. Give our corn one more stir. And we are set. Isn't that looking good? Promise this is gonna be the best tasting corn you ever had. And if it's not, you need to get a hold of me and let me know. Let me check on my ribs. Alrighty. I'm gonna take those out. And while they're still hot, what we wanna do is pour them over into the bowl. Looking good, looking good. Then we go over with our sweet and sour sauce. Yeah. Okay. We good there. We just want to turn them a couple times. And it's important to do it while it's still hot because what you want is for it to observe, uh, absorb the, the flavors of the sauce. That's why we didn't go too heavy with the spices. Because there's nothing like a good sauce. We want to get those, the flavors from that sauce in there. All right. So, I think it's about time to plate up. We'll start with our ribs. Because I'm very proud of these. Okay. See if we can get that to hang around on there. Okay. Now, we go with our corn. And there's nothing wrong with the corn absorbing a little bit of the... Oh, I'm making a mess here. I'm so excited. So good. All right. Come on with our broccoli. Whenever you cook broccoli, you should still have the the nice bright green. And we go there. Just like that. All right. Little pinch of salt. 